Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Opposition protest over Adani Road chaos continues in Indian Parliament. Clashes between Pakistan police and former PM Imran Khan supporters injure several. And Afghanistan most impacted by terrorism globally reveals report. And now for all the details, opposition lawmakers on Wednesday took out a protest march from the Parliament House in New Delhi to hand over a complaint to the Enforcement Directorate on the Adani issue. However, they had to return back after they were stopped by police due to restrictive orders on public gathering in the area. The opposition has been demanding a joint parliamentary committee probe, blaming the government of favouring the conglomerate amid charges of stock manipulation by a US short seller. The government and the Adani group led by billionaire Gautam Adani have denied the charges. So therefore we want there should be an inquiry and inquiry should be held and what is the relation between Prime Minister and Adani ji. Meanwhile, the parliament witnessed chaos yet again for a third day with the ruling BJP lawmakers demanding an apology from Congress leader Rahul Gandhi over remarks in London on the democracy in India. Heated exchanges between the lawmakers led to disruptions and adjournment of proceedings until Thursday. Pakistani security forces withdrew from around Imran Khan's Zaman Park residence on Wednesday afternoon putting a halt to clashes that had erupted after police tried to arrest the former Prime Minister for not showing up in the case against him related to selling state gifts. The violence which erupted on Tuesday saw security forces firing tear gas and water cannons at stone pelting crowds that had cordoned off Khan's residence. The clash has left several security officials and PTI supporters injured. Khan on Twitter said he had signed a surety bond that would guarantee his appearance in the court by a March 18 deadline and pinned hope on the establishment and judiciary to end the farce. Ye sari aaj shells ye dekh lein, tear gassing shells. Ye sari kal shaam se, ye sirf mere ghar mein jo padhe hai, ye mare ghar ke irgad jo shells mein lein, jo meri zaman paak ke ghar ke andar jo shelling hoi hai. Mein ye aapko is liye dikha raha hoon. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has hinted towards more burden on the inflation hit masses in the coming days as the country scrambles to meet the International Monetary Fund IMF conditions for reviving the stalled 1.1 billion US dollars loan tranche. Talking to a local TV news channel, Sharif hit out at his predecessor and said it was due to Imran Khan's backtracking. The global lender has forced Pakistan to implement the preconditions. He said Pakistan and IMF may sign a staff level agreement within a few days. The IMF deal would unlock other bilateral and multilateral financing avenues for Pakistan to shore up its foreign exchange reserves, which have fallen to just four weeks' worth of import cover. Uh, और जब भी IMF के साथ जब हमारे मुआयदात होते रहे हैं इससे कबल भी होते रहे हैं और उनको मुकम्मल भी किया जाता रहा है लेकिन इमरान खान के दौर में जो IMF के साथ एक हमारा मुआयदा हुआ था उसके बाद इमरान खान ने जाते जाते हुए उस मुआयदे की कुली खिलाफ वर्जी की जिसके बाद एक बुरानी सी कैफियत पैदा हो गया था और वो बुरान आज तक जारी है the education sector in Balochistan province has suffered from years of neglect and poor funding under Pakistani rule, which is subsequently forcing students to drop out. A report. Locals in remote areas of Balochistan province have lamented the Pakistan government's apathy to maintain and reconstruct schools and provide basic facilities. Some of the reasons which are forcing many students to drop out. Residents of a village in Nushki district said the school building in their area is in bad condition for the past 20 years. 
their repeated pleas for more teachers, drinking water, electricity and other amenities have been ignored for long. लेकिन स्कूल का हालात बहुत खराब है पीछे से आपने भी देखा था कि पूरा गिर गया है और इधर से भी खिरे किया है गिरने का खतरा है तकरीबन 50 से 70 बच्चे इसमें स्कूल में पढ़ते हैं लेकिन टीचर एक है लेकिन मैं घर पे छोड़े भी इसी हाल है स्कूल पे स्कूल ले जाए भी इसी हाल है नए टीचर है इसमें नए With low participation in primary and secondary school levels, the unemployment rate in the province is quite high. Locals say Balochistan is resource-rich but remains neglected in terms of development, with standards of living and social indicators lagging substantially behind the rest of the country. The Global Terrorism Index report published by Sydney-based Institute for Economics and Peace has stated that Afghanistan has remained the country most impacted by terrorism for the fourth consecutive year, despite attacks falling by 75% and deaths by 58%. As per the report, Afghanistan recorded 633 fatalities in 2022, despite terrorism-related deaths declining by 866 compared to the previous year. The data, however, does not include acts of state repression and violence as the Taliban is no longer included in the scope of the report since it took control of the government in 2021. The Islamic State has emerged as the most active terrorist group in Afghanistan now and is responsible for the deaths of 422 people in 2022, accounting for almost 67% of the total terrorism-related deaths, the report said. In the latest, the group also claimed responsibility for an attack during an event of journalists and killing of a Taliban governor. Sri Lanka's government spokesperson Vandula Gunawardena said on Tuesday that the island nation has approved anti-corruption legislation that is a key clause in the actions needed for its $2.9 billion bailout from the International Monetary Fund. The proposed anti-corruption legislation is a part of the IMF staff-level agreement that the crisis-hit country agreed to last September. Meanwhile, President Ranil Vikramasinghe has said that Sri Lanka will not make side arrangements with any of its bilateral or commercial creditors to reduce the impact of debt treatment on them. The island nation has secured financing assurances from all its major bilateral creditors, including India and China, and so has set the stage for the IMF to give its final approval for a four-year bailout package on March 20. Thanks. Buddhist monks offered special prayers for the long life of the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, in India's Dharmshala on Wednesday. The Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa, for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. Tibetans in exile and Buddhist monks on Wednesday offered special prayers for the long life of Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, at the main monastery in India's northern hill town of Dharmshala. Hundreds of followers, including foreigners, attended the ceremony, which began with masked dance performances, followed by chanting of prayers for the well-being of the 87-year-old spiritual leader. I'm receiving a gift for my whole life, and I'm feeling very privileged to be here, and um, I'm traveling around India and I didn't know this will happen and today is my last day here so I feel like I'm receiving uh, India hosts a large community of Tibetans including their exile leader the Dalai Lama the Nobel laureate fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule he has since lived mostly in Dharmshala, where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.